Worker deaths in oil and forestry in Alberta and British Columbia. Missionary Manitoba couple convicted of child sex crimes in the Dominican Republic. The common front is on strike again. There is a high percentage of so-called friendly fire incidences within the IDF. And one person dies at Britain's floating migrant prison barge. Good morning. It's Wednesday, December 13th. I'm Nora. Here are your headlines. Let's start this morning with some stories of workplace deaths. First to Edmonton, where Imperial Oil has said that a contractor fell to his death earlier this week. He was working on a building on Refinery Row in Edmonton, reports Craig Ellingson from CTV News. All Alberta Occupation Health and Safety said to CTV was that the person fell from quote unquote a height, which is pretty much a less than useful statement. And that's it, actually. That's the whole article from CTV. Literally, that's all we get. Here, I'll add some more information for Ellingston. During the last quarter, Imperial Oil made $1.6 billion in net income, also known as profits. They produce 423,000 gross oil equivalent barrels per day, and their biggest production site was at Curl. Earlier this month, a worker died at the Genese Mine, a coal mine located southwest of Edmonton. In 2022, there were 161 workers recognized during the annual Day of Mourning, an event that commemorates workers who've died the previous year. Okay, now over to Vancouver Island, where a member of USW Local 1-1937 died last week at the Nasuk Bay Dryland Sorting Facility. This is west of Gold River. Western Forest Products confirmed that a worker had died. Like in Alberta, this worker also was a contractor. The death caused the company to pause harvesting operations, and WorkSafe BC is investigating, along with the coroner's office. That's all we get from Marie Zeidler at CBC News 2. Here, I'll add a bit for Zeidler. Last year, the BC Federation of Labour said that 241 workers died in British Columbia while on the job. It was the highest number of deaths in a single year in the past decade. At the federal government site for the Day of Mourning, they write that 1,081 workers died in 2021 alone, the vast majority of whom were men. Next, Adam and Tracy Pepper, a couple who lived near Steinbeck in Manitoba, have been found guilty of sexually assaulting and threatening children in the Dominican Republic. They were there in 2019 to do so-called missionary work, reports Taylor Brock, who was on Adam Pepper's Facebook page to come up with that line. In fact, if you go to his Facebook page, there's a lot of information about the Dominican Republic there, and it's really gross. I won't share the details about how the abuse came to light, as they are horrifying, but the mother of one of the victims is the one who notified authorities after seeing images on a cell phone that Adam Pepper had given to her. Both Adam and Tracy have been found guilty of sex crimes against the same child. They were sentenced in the Dominican Republic. Tracy got five years and Adam got seven. The pair is also banned from leaving the country. They had volunteered with a youth staff at Gospel Chapel in La Brocrie between 2008 and 2012. The lead pastor there told CTV News that they are, quote, reaching out to staff about the couple, unquote. Adam studied Bible college out in Manitoba, but he went to high school in Ontario, in Brampton, to be specific. Next, Franc Commun members are back on strike. As of this week, some 420,000 workers again walked off the job in the latest strike dates that have been determined by the unions. They join another 66,000 striking teachers who've been off the job since November 23rd. The nursing union, La Fic, is also on strike this week for four days. William Crooks at the Sherbrooke Record wrote that the Student Association at the Cégep de Sherbrooke has, quote, announced its unequivocal support for the Common Front's recent picketing movement at the Cégep campus, unquote. Cégep professors across the province are part of the Franc Commune. 
Details about the salary offer show just how bad negotiating has been with the government. Quoting Brigitte Robert, president of the union at Champlain Lennoxville, said that the previous offer was just 10.3% over five years. The latest offer was 12.7% over five years. That still is not inflation, and the Common Front rejected it. They will remain on strike until December 14th. Next, data reported by Ynet News that comes from the IDF shows that one-fifth of Israel's military fatalities are the result of so-called friendly fire incidences. Fighting within cities, especially at night, has made it hard for IDF soldiers to distinguish, quote, between friend and foe, unquote. Rather than maybe, you know, not doing that, uh, the IDF is trying to deal with this issue by equipping almost every soldier with a technological marker. 13 were killed after being mistaken for being Palestinian, one was killed by a stray bullet, and six were killed in accidents, including one IDF member who was run over by an armored vehicle. The IDF says that the total death count from the ground invasion is 105. Remember that there are some 20,000 Gazans who've been killed as a result of the IDF's ground invasion. The IDF also admits that there were casualties killed on October 7th by the IDF, but that, quote, it would not be morally sound to investigate these incidents due to the immense and complex quantity of them that took place in the kibbutzim and southern Israeli communities due to the challenging situations the soldiers were in at the time, unquote. That is a convenient explanation for why Israel won't investigate how many of the people who died on October 7th actually died at the hands of the IDF. I guess forevermore, all we can say is that some number of people were killed by Israel and not Hamas. And finally, to Britain's floating prison that migrants who are awaiting trial to have their asylum claims heard are forced to live at. It's called the Bibby Stockholm Barge, and it's anchored in Portland, Dorset. Someone has just died who is living on this barge. Al Jazeera quotes British Interior Minister James Cleverly saying this, quote, Tragically, there has been a death on the Bibby Stockholm barge. At this stage, I'm uncomfortable getting into any more details, but we will, of course, investigate fully, unquote. Gosh, it almost sounds like a Monty Python sketch. Some 500 people can live on the barge. It was evacuated earlier this year when Legionella was found in the barge's water supply. The barge is officially not a prison, and officials say that people are allowed to head into the nearby town for quote-unquote short trips, though the Guardian has reported that this isn't actually easy to do. Residents of the barge say that living there is brutal. Quote, we are treated in such a way that we despair and wish for death, unquote, said one man. Those are your headlines for Wednesday, December 13th. I'm Nora. You're listening to this podcast at sandynora.com on the Real News Network podcast feed and anywhere you get your podcasts. Whew, Wednesday already, eh? Mm, have a good one. I'll talk to you tomorrow.